in addition to Sigma bonds, we also have pi bonds. Here I go through um, the chemistry behind them and what impact they have on everything around them. In the last video, we looked at the hybridization of the S and the P orbitals to make sigma bonds or single bonds. In this video, we are going to be looking at pi bonds, which is the other bond in a double bond. We have a sigma bond and we have a pi bond. When we look at the electrons in carbon that are available to bond, we have six electrons. One, two, three, four, five, Six. Now we know in a single bond that this electron gets excited up to there and exactly the same thing is going to be happening in our pi bond. One of the 2s2 electrons is going to move up to the 2p orbital giving us four identical empty spaces for electrons to bond in. Now our single bonds, our sigma bonds, are going to be these three here, and they are all going to be exactly the same. These are going to be 2sp2 orbitals. And then the last one on the end that is going to form our pi bond, that's our sigma bond, this is going to be our pi bond. This is just going to stay as a 2p orbital. It is not going to hybridize. Now we have our three identical sigma bonds. One, two, three, surrounding each carbon. One, two, three, one, two, three. These are going to be the, the hybridized sp2 um, because we have one from the S and two from the P, SP2 orbitals making our sigma bonds. Now we need to deal with this 2P orbital, which is going to make our pi bond. Now, if we draw our pi bond in, we would draw it coming off the carbon, and this is going to be slightly wonky. You have to remember that I'm doing this, drawing this in 2D, whereas in reality it happens in 3D. The orbital is going to be coming off here like this, that's the top of the orbital, and then down there like that, that's the bottom of the orbital. This is all one big orbital. And then from the other carbon, it's going to be the top of the orbital, and then that there, oh no, a bit wonky, that there is going to be the bottom of the orbital. And where these two P orbitals overlap, in this section here, this is a pi bond. Now there are not two different pi bonds here, they are both the same pi bond because we have two orbitals overlapping making one bond. Easier to see here, here we have two orbitals overlapping making one bond. Two sigma um, sp3 orbitals overlapping, making one bond. Here we have a p orbital and a p orbital, the same p orbital. Here is our p orbital in its dumbbell shape. They are both overlapping at the top and the bottom to make the, the pi bond. It is quite hard to see. Um, scribbling on here, drawing on here doesn't really help, but it's a very, very big orbital at the top and the bottom it is just one big big bond there now because we have the same bond at the top and the bottom this is going to prevent any free rotation around our double bond here which leads to a lot of the properties of double bonded compounds but it is important that you understand the difference and the different impacts that sigma and pi bonds have.